My prayers are with you. Yeah! I must end you. Forgive me. I must end you. My prayers are with you. Fate has brought us here. Forgive me. No more. What's good, everyone? It's your boy, Sales, back again with another Hero of the Week. In honor of Martha receiving his first ever alt in Fire Emblem Heroes after a full year and winning my poll against Takumi on my Instagram page, which you should totally follow if you aren't already, we're going to take a look at the Hero King himself. Oh, okay, I, I can't go in the video any further without addressing this. Honestly, I don't know what the deal with Martha is. Like, I get it, he's the face of the franchise, he's the person that everyone knows because of Super Smash Brothers. But is Marth really this popular? Because there's been a trend in Fire Emblem Heroes of making fun of people who haven't gotten any type of recognition from Elgeldra Systems. For example, Roy was the longest for a long time because his Bonnie Blade was so underwhelming. Then we got Corrin as a meme because his Yato Blade was, a, was pretty much a worse silver sword refined for speed. So I... I don't know if you guys really like Marth this much, or if he's just more proper than I'm giving him credit for. But hey, what do I know? I'm not here to rain on the man's parade, so let's get on and talk about Marth, because I know there are some legit Marth fanboys out there. I have to open by saying that Marth is a launch unit, so he was intentionally nerfed alongside characters like Roy and Sheeta, so that they wouldn't be vastly overpowered in comparison to the rest of the cast. Well... For the most part. That's what Marth here. Of course. But, oh, oh my god, you do absolutely nothing. Let's just trap you. Yeah. And Takumi is gonna go for 18 times 2 on Frederick and kill him because he got retribution. Let's go. Ah. Uh, Together. This is bad. What do you do now? However, when you keep this in mind, you actually see that his stats don't look all that bad around the board. However, unlike you like Brave Lucina, who I talked about was kind of falling off a little bit, Marth does fall off a little harder than Brave Lucina did. Also, a little known fact, the reason we get so many weapon refines versus just straight up character buffs is because according to Japanese gacha rules, it's considered unethical to tamper with a character's stats after they've officially been released to the public. So a loophole that they found in this system is to give these characters really powerful personal weapons that will allow them to keep up with the ever-changing meta. At least, that's what's been working so far. However, considering that this is Marth, I do find it kind of fitting that he himself is a meh unit. Despite what you probably see in Melee, Marth is not a man that believes in the strength of one individual. He spends a lot of his time supporting his allies and building up the moral of his army so that they can strike as one and that they can truly seize victory as a team. You too are blessed with wonderful allies. It's because of Marth's compassion and trust in his friends that I feel that turning him into a buff bot for his team is the perfect fit for him as a character. Just to be sure that we're all on the same page, Marth's falchion recently got refined so that it has a spectrum drive built into it, which gives plus two to all stats of units within two spaces of Marth. This may seem a little underwhelming by itself, but as you'll see with the builds, when you start to pair with other skills, it's actually pretty impressive. While we won't be focusing on Marth himself too much, I still do think that it's important to review his stats because there are times where Marth is going to be forced to engage in a fight and not rely on his allies. A problem with a lot of the launch units is that they're not very well min-maxed, and by that I mean that their stats are kind of all, all over the place, while units today are very specialized and they excel in one specific role. When you have units like this that don't have boosted BST and balanced all around, you come to the problem where they're not bulky enough to take hits for the team, they're not fast enough to avoid doubles, and they're not strong enough to one-shot, so they just turn out underwhelming overall. 
an offensive stat spread of 31-34 was good enough back in the day. However, now that's under 50 attack, which makes you really hard to one-shot anything, and you're not fast enough to double anything, so you just kind of be sitting there for the most part. And when you're a sword hero that can't one-round KO an axe unit, that's kind of a problem. However, Defense 29 is still pretty good by today's standards and is high enough to run skills like Bonfire. And 23 Res is above average for melee units, so you can reliably run skills like Disencounter and not have to worry about being one-shot. And since he has a pretty alright speed stat, if you get a plus speed mark, then he's going to be fast enough to avoid some doubles as long as you're not a blue mage. I'm going to try my hardest not to recommend Fury on a lot of these skills because Fury is in my opinion the most overrated skill in the game. I feel like you get the most out of your buck for Fury in modes like Arena, but Fireman Heroes is so much bigger than Arena. You have things like Grand Hero Battles, Bound Hero Battles, Legendary Hero Battles, Chain Challenges, Tempest Trials, and so many modes where you just fight for a very long time that Fury starts to become more of a hindrance than a help. However, because Falsion users have Renewal built into their weapon, they can kind of negate the Fury knockback damage and it's not that big a deal for them. However, I believe that Marth appreciates Fury the most out of all the Falchion users because his stats are the most balanced of all the Falchion users. However, an unrefined Falchion only has Renewal 2 built into it, so you have two options because of this. The first option is to have Renewal 2 in the B slot, so you have an explosion of HP recovery every third turn, or you can have Renewal 3 and get healing every second and third turn, but you miss out on the first turn of healing. I for one kind of like the explosion of HP, so I will win with Renewal 2 when I'm with my, with my budget Marth. However, I can see the power of consistency, so like I said, Renewal 2 or 3 works perfectly fine. In the C slot, you can go with Threat and Defense, however, you really want to go with a skill that synergizes well with your team because this is a team oriented game, so you might want to go with a Fortifier Defense for a setup that you don't have currently your team, or even a tactic, I don't know, but it's really up to you. However, I'm not going to sit here and explain the entire build because this is like the most basic build for any Falchion user that we've all seen a million times, so I'm just going to move on to the next build now. But I do think that is the most effective for a budget build for like Arena Assault and whatnot, that's why I showcased it. This next build is the one that I personally run on my Marth, and I'm going to be using this set to explain why I love this specific build so much. As you're seeing on the screen right now, I used this specific build to help me clear Legendary Ryoma's challenge map. My only Raven Tome usage I had available was Shigure, and he exactly didn't cut it when it came to that infantry with the, with the poison dagger, and I didn't want to resort to building up with Leon just for the sake of this grand hero battle. My Vanguard Ike was instant to the grinder for my Fae, and I refused to resort to the Cancer that is Brave Lind and Reinhardt. So I was really in a jam with this legendary hero battle until I finally finished up my Marth for this video ironically enough. The combination of his refined plus drive, at drive attack and speed gave him plus 5 attack and speed to all allies within 2 spaces while still giving them plus 2 to all their defenses which was pretty nice. Keep in mind that, Mar that Marth's Falchion bonuses act as ink combat bonuses, so you can also stack them with Hones and Fortifies. And that's exactly what I did with my buff bot Azura, which allows me to pass on plus 9 attack and speed to any given ally on my team, and an additional plus 6 defense and res to any unit that Azura Dan decides to use Sing on thanks to Geyser Dance. And don't even get me started what happens to the poor soul that gets targeted by chill speed, which effectively adds on another 7 speed to all units attacking against that unit. This is where I fear that Marth is most effective. While this build is pretty similar to the first build, I think that keeping Fury is so well made for Falchion users that you shouldn't really get rid of it in the A slot. Intelligence System really hasn't given free-to-play users all that many A slots for defensive purposes, which is why you see Fury so much and Life and Death on a lot of builds most of the time, because you either are building up a glass cannon or a tank, and those are pretty much the only two options on free-to-play units. I also feel that Chill Speed is a nice fit for Marth, because it turns his pretty average speed stat into something really impressive. Reducing the enemy's speed by 7, 
effectively gives Marth a base of 41 speed and 44 with Fury, which all of a sudden is pretty viable for doubling a lot of units. In the event he still can't double the opponent however, he still is a buff bot, so he can just buff up another alley and then his teammate can finish the job for him. Reposition is highly recommended for this build because it keeps his units fairly close to him and you don't want to get them too far off because as soon as they get out of his range then they lose out on the plus 5 to all attack and speed. For example, Lucius here has to take out this Lance unit on the first round, however without Mart's help he can't do it. So if I put him in range with Mart's refine, he's able to take out the Lance unit, which means that he's able to stay here for the next turn, tank the green mage, and then continue to chip down with the pain plus combo. This is just one example on how Mart's refine is just so powerful and just showing people that buffing is really good in this game. So. If you don't think that Mars Refine is all that impressive, hopefully that this clip here will change your mind. And if you want to go any further than Marth, all I can say is plus 10 him, because at that point his 24 res goes to 28, and if you decide to put a res boon on him, that's 31 res, which makes him a very solid use for distant counter. And at that point he's able to he's be he's able to be a dragon check and a green mage check, which are two very relevant threats for arena purposes. Jill's B is going to allow him to double a lot of things that he wouldn't otherwise double. So I think that's pretty much all I can really do for him because you don't want to take away the buffing aspect because as you, I've said, that is very important adding on plus 5 to all stats around you. Well, at least to attack and speed. That's pretty relevant. I don't think you, I don't think that you should take off Faustion for anything, even refined weapons. I know that Divine Dew is a really valuable resource in this game. And I know that the red slot is even more competitive slot than ever and usually red is a very offensive color and for Mart to be kind of defensive I can see how it's a turn off I really do but I promise you if you give Mart a chance he will not let you down think about it like this would you rather want one very powerful red unit on your team or would you rather sacrifice one slot to make your entire team extremely powerful just think of that for a second